Welcome to our service of collective worship as we prepare and anticipate Mothering Sunday. Wherever we are, wherever we're worshipping together, we know that when we stand within the light of Christ, and when we open ourselves to God's love as a mother, the Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Today, because it's such a beautiful day outside, we're going to sing as our opening, This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Our canticle, our said song, is the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant, Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Gospel reading comes from the beginning of Luke's Gospel, quite close to where those words also come from. It's from Luke chapter 2 verses 33 to 35, so it's very short. Listen carefully and I'll begin. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those words from Luke's Gospel come, as I said, right at the beginning of Luke's story. When Joseph and Mary took the child Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. And this tiny, tiny baby was presented and held up as a symbol of their hopes for his future. And he was taken by Simeon and presented and held up as more than just someone whose future was being hoped for, but as the hope of the whole future of all God's people. A sign which people will speak against and reveal their th secret thoughts a child chosen for the salvation of many. Simeon also said that a sword of sorrow will break the hearts 
of Mary and Joseph. And then Anna, a woman who'd been in the temple fasting from food and praying continuously and hoping for the coming of the anointed one from God, the Messiah, the one who Simeon had proclaimed, saw in Jesus too his hope for the future. It's quite common, whatever your relationship with your mum is like, whatever your relationship with other caregivers is like, to think of motherhood as really important in how we are cared for. Lots of people in our lives have roles that are the same as the best of mothers. And so maybe when I talk about mothers, you might think, well, that's how my auntie looks after me. That's how my dad behaves. That's how a carer or a grandparent or another person who looks after and loves you and has the best hope for your future behaves in your life. We're getting ready in the school, in church, to celebrate Mothering Sunday, which actually has very little to do in its history with motherhood. It's a day when servants were given some time off, an opportunity to go back to their families, yes, those often included mothers, but a day also to go back to their mother church, the place where they'd come from and grown up. It's really like a bank holiday is today. So it's a celebration day for all people. And it's rooted in the gratitude we have for those places where we grew up, where we are growing up. And for all the carers and parents, the mothers, for the aunties and uncles, the dads, the grandmas, the grandpas, who are all really important within the community in which we are being raised. All the people who in the future we will look back on with thanks that they helped us to be prepared to flourish in life. We often celebrate mothers or other caregivers on Mothering Sunday. We often give them bunches of flowers. We often talk about how wonderful it is to have people in our lives that we can thank in this way, whether or not they are actually mothers. But we don't often think about how hard and how painful it is to take up that kind of role, of how much sorrow and giving up your own desires and selfishness is part of the role of the best of mothers, of the best of carers, of those people who are the best because they want the best for others. Just imagine now all the things that the people who care for you have to give up. They give up on sleep at night. They are willing to step on Lego, which is the most painful thing known to humanity. They provide you with food and warmth and love. They give up, therefore, their time, their energy, their talents. They pay for things. Imagine all that, that are things that are willingly given, but are things which are always involving giving something up as well. And then imagine whether you are thinking about being a mother or a carer in another way. Imagine that there will be things you know you can't do for your child or the person you're caring from. Imagine knowing that there will be things in their lives to come, and I'm afraid there will be things in our lives, that cannot be protected from. Imagine knowing that all your hopes for the way they will flourish might lead them to flourish in a completely different way. All your desire for them is that they will flourish into the people 
who flourish on their own and may always love you, but will also say goodbye. That idea of a person or of a community who prepares for us to flourish, well, that's an image of the love of a mother in the best of all worlds. It may also be for you, or instead be for you, the image of the love of a father in the best of all worlds, or an auntie or an uncle or a grandma or a grandpa or a carer in the best of all worlds. And it's also the image of the love God bears for us as the best of all mothers. It's the image of the love of God that's seen in Jesus. And it's a love that Jesus experienced also because he was the child held up in the temple at Jerusalem, the child held up by Simeon, the child praised by Anna, the child cared for by Mary, who therefore gave her the gift and the challenge of becoming a mother, the most precious and life-changing gift that could ever be conceived to care for him. But it also gave her the challenge and the pain to come of seeing him grow and step into places of danger and to step into ways of living that could not be understood. To step into the way that we hear about at this time of year, the way through the wilderness and the way to the cross and to his crucifixion. The way that brought her sorrow and the piercing sword of pain. Amen. Let's pray together now for all those who take care of us as a mother would in the best of all worlds, for those who love us and give up their best interests that we may flourish, for mums and dads, for aunties and uncles, for grandmas and grandpas, for carers, for teachers, for leaders in our local community, sometimes even for siblings and friends, for all those who have caring responsibilities towards us. Lord God, King of all care, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are protectors of the innocent, for those who, as a mother hen, gather people into safety beneath the protection of their wings. We pray for children in places of danger and war, violence and cruelty. May they be kept safe by the gifts of those who offer this kind of protection. Lord God, King of care, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who seek to help us to grow and flourish into the people God is calling us to be. For all those who help us to understand God's calling to us. For all those who give us space and those things which we need, love, joy, peace and patience to grow in this way. Lord God, King of care, hear our prayer. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, 
to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. God has blessed us. Go in peace. Love and serve each other every day.